<laughs> now, the general election is less than a month away. You'd think they'd have mentioned it on the news. Yeah, you would. Uh, if you're still undecided, perhaps we could help. Uh, here on The One Show, we like to feel we've got a very large finger on the nation's pulse. Number 10, down in street. Number 10, down in street. That's where all the rules are made concerning you and me. With the election just around the corner, all eyes will be focused on this place, Downing Street. Politics is now so much about image. Do you think the hair has any impact on the way we think about it? Yes. Well, we think Clegg is quite dashing. His hair is <laughs> windswept, but not too windswept. Clegg is quite dashing. You can't tell that. Who's got the best hair in politics, do you think? Boris. <laughs> Until the 90s, you could walk up Downing Street unrestricted. But for the thousands of tourists who visit this 280-year-old national treasure, the only way to get a glimpse is from out here. And showing them the way is tour guide Daph. I'm a hairdresser. Yeah. I'd love to cut your hair and you can tell me a bit about that. Yeah, that's okay, that's fine. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I'll my nod. It's a good exchange, isn't it? The first Prime Minister to live here was the Whig, Robert Walpole. It was gifted by George II in 1735 to Sir Robert Walpole. And Walpole actually refused the gift and suggested it become the home of subsequent Prime Ministers. Our modern leaders can thank this wig in a wig. Okay, David, take a look. Wow, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of amazing people have visited this street, but I am the first person in history to cut hair on it. Wow, this place is great. There you go. More people coming out of number 10 after being at a sleepover, no doubt, at uh, Cameron's pyjama party. The iconic door is now made from bomb-proof steel. One thing has never changed, though, is the watchful Bobby beside it. He's gone off duty, so I'll have to, uh, I'll have to take over for a bit, you know, protect the nation's interests. It's not just the politicians who make their living here. The press do too. This is Adam Fleming, the political reporter. That right, Adam? That's right, yeah. Grasping the reins of power very often means a new haircut. The most prominent haircut change is the Chancellor George Osborne. Oh, I know. So I've it, seen it. Yeah, so oh. in old days, you know, he was quite so he was quite boothy on this, yeah. wasn't it? But then he got a new advisor and she sort of smartened really? him up and got that new haircut. He yeah. looks ever so slightly oasis esque these days, doesn't he? He's got like a little fringe, the Caesar that you yeah. call it. You know what politicians really hate, though? Wearing a hairnet. <laughs> <laughs> so they go to a factory or something like that. So, take a look. Okay. Oh, wow, great. How's that, all right? Yeah, I'd give that 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. See what 10 I did? 10. <laughs> you are a natural. Thanks. This is a house that Jack York. More leaks at Downing Street. This was the land that he worked for. No, if they can take pictures, then I can, yeah? So let's have a little look. Number 10. Yeah. We can start here for a second. Start here. Start here if you like. Your hair's way too long to start with. I caught up with A-level politics student Elizabeth after her trip inside. What did you think of this very British institution? I'm originally from Colorado in America, Okay. Um, but I just moved to Milton in Cambridge here. So what did you think of Downing Street? It's a lot different than I expected it to be. The White House is so grandiose, whereas Downing Street is it's just a little townhouse on a street, so it's really different. <laughs> Would you ever see yourself as a politician then? Would you get involved at that level? Um, I really want to be an MP when I grow up. And what attracts you to politics? Um, I think just the cliche um, angle of I just want to help people. Just like a hairdresser. Okay, I'll take a look. Okay. Oh, it's really good. Thank you. You happy? Yeah. <laughs> so vote for Douglas. <coughs> and we'll have to wait then till the seventh to find out who's got the best hair. And almost as importantly, who's going to win the election? Now we are joined by one of the most distinctive voices.